Good morning, church. Good to see everyone who made it out today, and I appreciate your coming. And uh, to this new challenging times that we are facing, I just uh, want to thank you so much for taking the time to come out and uh, be a part of this. Um, we're continuing forward with our pavilion. Uh, we're doing a fundraiser for that pavilion. We, we have a little we just want to make a monetary donation, but we are still selling subs, uh, $8 a piece. They're 12 inch subs, and if uh, you can get some orders from your place of work or family, or, and uh, we appreciate that. Also, um, have another announcement to make. She doesn't know this. See that beautiful Tiffany lamp that's sitting there on the organ? That Tiffany lamp was pre is being presented to Jeannie today. It's presented in loving memory of your father, and it's from the United Methodist Women of this church to show all the love and appreciation for all that you've done for this church. Albright's going to be having their peace social on August the 8th. Otterbein. That's right, it is Otterbein. <laughs> Otterbein is having their peak social on August the 8th, and um, that will be takeout, and some more announcements will be coming for that as we uh, progress along. And um, I think that's all I have. Queen Esther. Queen Esther. Queen Esther's next year. Yes, I'm taking reservations oh, now. I'm taking reservations for Red Esther now. So if you'd like to go see Esther, play Esther, you can see Bev, and she'll uh, line you up with those right reservations uh, for the play down in Lancaster. Um, See, so you know whether or not, but um, I thought it would be appropriate this 4th of July weekend. Uh, old glory has been getting kicked around a bit for the past. And uh, I think it's appropriate for all of us as Americans and patriots set aside political differences and ideas about viruses or what all that whatever's going on, and to appreciate that this country is here for us, that we have a, what, this, this land that we live in. And to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Be seated, and we will start with a prelude and a light, light of
Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, who rescues us from sin and death. Seek the renewal of your spirit, the light in God's law, and your inmost selves. Praise God for all who live in awe, for all who seek to do God's will. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your promise to be with us and among us today as we worship you in a spirit of humility and holiness. We invite you to be our true mirror, to hold up before us your word in such a way that we see our true selves. Help us also to see a new way of the fullness of your ineffable glory and transcendent grace and mercy. We await in the next hour your word to us that by it we may be empowered to live in the world, announcing your rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. In the name of Christ, our Savior and friend, amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the Psalm of Solomon, second chapter, starting with verse 8. The voice of my beloved. Look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our walls, gazing in at the window, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time for singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. this time we will uh, have Holy Communion. If you're hearing this in the parking lot today and are in need of a, a communion cup, uh, go ahead and hold your horn so we know that uh, you need one. Okay, here is done. I think everybody has it out the parking lot that, that needs it. Let's join together on our feet. Um, in our invitation followed by the uh, great fantasy. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore let us confess our sin before God and one another. First Merciful God, God we, confess we confess that, that we, have that we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient church. church. We have not, not done, done your will. will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so to people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your, your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you, Heavenly Father. Giving it to his disciples, he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us, on the gifts of bread and wine that they will be for us the body and the blood of Christ. That we will be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to the world until Christ comes in final victory and we can all feast at his heavenly rest. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and for them. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The communion cup is this little thing here. You pull back the top cellophane. Will expose the wafer. This is the body of Christ. Take and eat and remember. Then, if you pull back the foil, that exposes the juice. This is the blood of Christ. Take and drink in remembrance of him. All praise be to God this morning. In his holy name we pray. If at this moment you'd like to take a second and stand up and wave to your neighbors, you can pass the peace and that. Um, 
Uh, again, the offering will be taken at the end of church in the basket in the back. Uh, but at this time, as we are preparing, we'll uh, have our offertory prayer followed by the dog song. Yoke with you, O Jesus. There is no wisdom we cannot learn, no burden we cannot show. We find wisdom, rest, and strength in your nearness. So we come to you bearing our gifts for your service, for your kingdom, and with fresh devotion to love as you have loved us. We give you praise and glory. Bless these gifts as well as the givers. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. is 
pray, O oh Lord God, that we'll see a decline. That Heavenly Father, more will be able to have the confidence to come out and worship on a Sunday morning in the building. But until then, we thank you for this opportunity to reach out to folks over the radio, in the cars, on Facebook Live, as well as uh, on our website later on. In any way, O oh Heavenly Father, that we can reach out to you. Fill this space wherever people are with your Holy Spirit. For this truly is a time of worship and thanksgiving. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for the work that continues to be done for our churches. Thank you for the gifts that people have given. We thank you for people who put in their time and their and their labors. We pray to our Heavenly Father for the family of Jerry Wagons. We pray for Chuck and Ann, Hun, Ted, Dawn. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, all those on our prayer list this morning, lift them up to you, Lord God, and ask that your, your Holy Spirit, your Holy Hand of healing be upon them. We pray for our nation. We pray for its leaders. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, in coming together beneath the cross. Search our hearts. Search the gifts that we wish to bring to you. We love you. Help us during this time to express our love for one another, as well as you. In the strong name of your Son, Jesus Christ, you are a Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew. Uh, chapter 11, starting verse 16 through 19, and then 25 to 30. Let's hear the word of the Lord. But to what will I compare this generation? Like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We well. Not more. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, there's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that same time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth. Because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and revealed them to infants, yes, Father. For such as your gracious will, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal it. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So we had Independence Day. What a great day it was. I don't know who won the battle of South Collinsville, but it went on till the wee hours of the morning. Jesus says, to what shall I compare this generation? 
Isn't that a question we ask each other all the time? Every generation asks of the one that's coming up, what's up with these kids? What's up with these kids? I read a book by Billy Graham, and in it, Billy Graham was talking about these, these younger generation and the way they dressed and, and the way they talked and then hanging out and, and doing all types of disrespectful things to their parents. It was written in 1956. So what's that tell you about that generation? It's always going on. It's always our national pastime to try to look at the other generation that lack this or something or another. Tom Brokaw wrote a book called The Greatest Generation. And it argues that the GI generation, the ones that stormed the beaches of Normandy in World War II, that went to work in the factories and bought war bonds for the war effort, they're the greatest generation. These are the ones, men and women both, living and dead, who gave of their lives and their limbs, who gave of their sweet nightly dreams of childhood over to the enduring nightmare of war. The big one. The war that honestly and truly, honestly and truly saved the world. They bought bonds to, to support the war effort. They protected the home of the free and the land of the brave. So that we could grow up in safety and prosperity. You know what? They're not the greatest generation. Oh, it's difficult to compare. You think of the acts of heroism they performed that changed history? In the process, a stalwart population of people showed a tenacity to forge forward through battles in the South Pacific, North Africa, and Europe. When the war ended, they came home and they got married and they raised their kids and had, by the virtue of their participation in a global war, mature beyond the years of 17 and 18 and 19 years old. They came home and they had leadership skills. They came home with a strong sense of personal responsibility and patriotism. They came home to do their duty, to work with honor, to live in faith. They came home and started to rebuild a nation that had been They did so community by community as citizens and good Samaritans. When I look at my parents' generation, and some of you your grandparents' generation, that GI generation, we look at them and I tell you what, it's kind of hard for my generation to not feel a little, a little bit of a kick in the pants because of it. They saved us from Hitler. We need to honor them. They paid enough of a price. They shouldn't have to be paid with their health now that they're in their 90s. We need to protect them. And look out for them. Care for them. Even though they're not the greatest generation. Oh yeah, they've overcome so many obstacles. Folks, they invested, they made an investment in this country that was greater than any other investment. They started the GI Bill. They invested in the education of those coming home from war. So that they, those who came home just didn't 
What do we do now? We have nothing to do. They could go to college. They could get go to trade schools. They could get an education. Folks, I can't tell you how many teachers I had in high school who at one time in their life were either sitting in a, in, in, in a, in a bomber or on a ship or in a tank or carried a rifle somewhere. And now they're standing in front of me trying to teach me some sort of mathematics that I still don't get. But that was an investment by a grateful nation for the sacrifices that was made. Many sacrifices. The Bulge and, and, and Pearl Harbor, Peleliu, Guadalcanal, Normandy. Still not the greatest generation. That generation changed things. They really changed things. You may think that walking through the picket lines on a strike or, or going to important. I'm telling you what, that generation. We talk about women's lip. Long before women's lip, it was Rosie the River. Well, the men, men of the households are out working. Women went into the factories and they built the tanks, they built the ships, they built the planes, they made the bombs and the bullets. All the while, all the while doing these type of things, that when their men came back and went back to their households, gave up those jobs so that men had work for their families. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. These women, they were waves and wax. They were, they were flying planes with supplies to, to troops. They were working as nurses in the front line, these women. They were amazing. Amazing. And yet still, all that they did to make America, America. When they came home, folks, they weren't content. They saw the world. They weren't content to live in little Collinsville. They went out the world. And they pushed forward. They pushed west. And made America the nation that it is today. But they're still not the greatest generation. So what is it? What generation stands out? What generation can have that distinct distinction if not that generation? Which was, let's face it, pretty great. Folks, it's the wrong question. It's a bad question. Because the greatest generation is not born between a set of years, but the people who are reborn at any age. The question is not generational greatness, but regenerational greatness. As Jesus said, what should I compare this generation? He was totally frustrated. He was bemoaning the stubbornness of people's hearts. It's like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, we played the flute, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. We all know that Jesus wept, but I'm telling you right now, Jesus had his moments where he got hot under the collar and ran and raved a little bit. This was one of those instances. Do not ignore the word woe. There's a word you don't get used at very often anymore, do you? Woe. Woe unto you, he said. Don't trivialize me. Don't try to make me irrelevant. Nevertheless, there was a remnant of that generation, that generation Jesus was speaking of, that very one that followed him, that did dance when he piped, 
that did mourn when he dirged. And that dance is what goes on today that has brought you up this morning to worship. But it's not Generation X, it's not the boomers, it's not the builders, it's not the millennial kids of today. It's all of those and even more. It's every single person of every single generation who submits to have their hearts regenerated. People who through faith conquered kingdoms. They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched fury of flames. They escaped swords. Their weakness was turned to strength. They were more powerful in battle and they fought off foreign enemies. These same people were stoned, crucified, sawn into, burned alive. They went about in sheepskin, goatskin. They were destitute. They were persecuted and mistreated. The world looked at them as not worthy to even recognize. And yet, they held on to their faith. They held on to the promise of Christ. They held on to the promise of eternal life. That is the greatest generation. And that generation is sitting here today, hearing this sermon this morning. Generational Church of God, marked not by the year that they were born, but when the Master called upon their hearts. Together we serve. Together we strive, together we grieve, and together we die. To call one generation the greatest immediately will diminish the other generations that have gone on before or the ones that will follow. It distracts us from this Christian truth before the awesome divine presence of God. We are one people, a single generation. A human generation loved by Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Bread of Thank you. 